Can you guys hear me? Oh, well, I guess I can. All right, let's get started. Hey, Dad, can you tell me a bedtime story? Why, sure thing, kiddo. Let me whip it out for you real quick. Once upon a time, in the Santa Valley, there was a high school full of amazing musicians and wonderful, talented people. And these students were holding the 2022 CBIM Pop Concert. Now, the patrons that were at this school were very respectful. They turned off their cell phones, got rid of any distractions, and the extra food ones donated to CBIM and also purchased baked goods at the bake sale right outside the Abbey Auditorium. And so these kids were performing for their parents, and these parents were very excited to hear a wonderful selection of great music by the wonderful groups led by CBIM. However, these kids also... Dad, this story sucks. <laughs> um, you know what, kiddo? I'm, I'm trying my best here, okay? No, you know what be better than sleeping, actually? Let's go visit these concerts. These patrons are actually real. <laughs> and so, you know, come on over watch this concert. What do you say about that, kiddo? You know? Yeah, let's go! Yeah. Enjoy the show, guys. Hello and welcome to the CBIM Instrumental Music Mass Concert. Thank you very much. Tonight we're gonna we're gonna introduce you to a lot of stories. And these stories are very important. We've known you. We've been told bedtime stories as you just saw one right here when we were young and older in movies and books and poems, all retail stories. So our attempt tonight is to is to through some songs are narrated, some songs. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them before we play, but every song tonight tells a specific story. So when it's almost night, we're going to start with The Jungle Book. In 1894, uh, this is a collection of stories written by famous English author Rudyard Kipling in 1894, made famous to modern audiences by Walt Disney in the animated classic by the same name, The Jungle Book. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, and very nice, very nice job. Thank you. Our next piece is a medley from Toy Story 2, which, as you know, is a simple yet deep story about toys and the kids who play with them. One of the songs we're going to play in this medley is a song about Jessie, a lost cowgirl toy who was outgrown by her original owner. Once thought to be a love song, Randy Newman, who won a Grammy Award for this song, intended it to be a moving metaphor for children who inevitably grow up to become independent from their parents.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now for our third and last song, I'd like to ask Mr. Freeman to come on up. Everyone give it a hand for Mr. Freeman. Uh, we're going to have one song in each group that's narrated. I asked all the kids, who would you like to narrate? And, and Mr. Freeman was the one that they asked for. So we, we asked him up and he said, yes, he'd do it. So he's going to tell us the story of John Philip Sousa. is the story of an American boy who grew up to become a great star. He's the most famous musician in the world. This is the story of John Philip Sousa. Sousa was an American hero, a great band leader, conductor, composer of all kinds of music, a patriot, a sports writer, a writer of novels, short stories, and plays, and the composer of 136 of the greatest marches ever written. He was born in Washington, D.C. in 1854, the son of immigrant parents. His father was Portuguese. His mother was born in Bavaria. His father, Antonio, was a trombonist in the Marine Band. Young John Phillips started attending Marine Band rehearsals at the age of 11, sometimes playing the cymbals, the triangle, or the alto horn. As he grew up, he learned to love hunting and fishing and competitive sports, especially baseball and boxing. He also became a very good violinist. At the age of 13, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps as an apprentice musician. He continued to receive musical training on the trombone, drum, fife, and clarinet. John and his father served in the Marine Band together. By the age of 20, Sousa's formal musical training was coming to an end. He was playing the violin professionally and writing marches, songs, orchestrations, and arrangements. In 1880, at the age of 26, John Philip Sousa became the 14th conductor of the United States Marine Band. In 1889, Sousa wrote a march called Washington Post, which became a big hit song in America and across Europe. It was the success and popularity of Washington Post that led to Sousa being called the March King. In 1892, Sousa left the Marine Band and became the leader of his own professional band, the Sousa Band. With the Sousa Band, he performed concerts across America from coast to coast. They were the most popular musical group in America, and he became an American legend. In 1896, Sousa wrote the greatest march ever written, the Stars and Stripes Forever, the National March of the United States of America. By now, the Sousa Band was the most famous band in the world, and Sousa had become America's most famous musician. He and his band performed throughout Europe and then toured around the world, becoming more and more popular. Sousa continued conducting and touring with America's most famous band until his 77th birthday. On March 5, 1935, he conducted a band in Pennsylvania, concluding appropriately with the Stars and Stripes Forever. Later that night, he passed away in his sleep, bringing an end to the remarkable life and career of this great American band leader. Give a big round of applause to Mr. Freeman. Thank you very, very much. Hello. Lisa Zimmer. Oh, okay. Alright. Another hand for everyone else on the little bit. All right, so we're back. Okay, so story time, jazz band style. We're going to play two pieces. The first one is Lucretia McEvil, okay, uh, by Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Inspired by funky, duplicitous women, David Clayton Thomas wrote this tune to describe the character of many interesting 
and evil ladies he'd run across throughout the early years of his career. recommended, suggested by our band president, uh, Alex, uh, trying to figure out pieces that would be story-driven. We There's an actual Herbie Hancock piece called Tell Me a Bedtime Story, so we had to play it. Herbie Hancock composed Tell Me a Bedtime Story in 1969, right at the point of transition from straight-ahead jazz to jazz fusion. The tunes, the lyrical melody, and extended jazz harmonies blend extremely well with the funky rhythm sections under it all. Hancock's innovators Innovations have influenced gener several generations of pop, rock, and jazz musicians, including Stevie Wonder and Prince. Herbie played with Miles Davis and is now a professor and chairman at the Herbie Hancock Institute of UCLA. So, here we go. Tell me about Tensor. Thank you. 
Down here at Bedroom Story. Soul Star with Chris on the tenor, amazing song, and Sam on the funky keyboards. Alright, now we've got String Orchestra. My favorite, ooh, sorry, my favorite story is Perseus. They're going to play a piece written by Suni Newbold, uh, up and coming composer. She started playing at the age of seven on the violin and she composes for a lot of things. But Perseus, I remember watching Clash of the Titans when I was young, reading Greek mythology, and this is just really fun. It's kind of a gross picture there, but hey, it's a fun story. It tells a tale of a journey with legendary hero Perseus as he slays the snake haired Medusa and rescues the princess Andromeda. The dynamic soaring melodies will command you and plunge you into a riveting world, riveting world, world, whirlwind of adventure. Sit back and hold on to your seats.
calling up people's names. Okay, we show appreciation by applauding and being happy and stuff. That's great, but we don't call out names because it just draws attention to individuals and not the whole group. So let's try to do that. Thank you. Our next piece is La La Land, which is a fame, which is a favorite of a lot of our pieces here. Uh, it's a 2016 musical comedy uh, picture, motion picture, about having a dream at the cost of pursuing that dream. The question we all ask ourselves, what if, inspired by the melodies of Heroes' score, what if everything had or hadn't worked out? What if my dreams don't come true? The thing propels us to face everything in life that is possible. Thank you. 
beautifully done her solo suit. For our third and final piece, I want to bring up Mrs. Musa. Come on down. Come on over. Yeah. So we're going to play shares. And one of our students, Megan, stand up, Megan. Megan had the task of writing this story herself because we didn't have a story for this, and Shahrazad is about stories that she will hear. And so Megan condensed the whole thing, and Ms. Muslik is going to read it to us. So, are we ready? Can you hear me? This is not a love story. This is the story of a young woman who outwitted a cruel and tyrannical ruler. This is the story of Scheherazade. Everyone thought Scheherazade was insane when she volunteered to be the Sultan's bride. The Sultan, after all, was marrying a new girl every night and killing them the next morning. But Scheherazade had a plan. The first night with the Sultan, she told him a story. And every night, she leaves him hanging. the tale she told was of the voyages of Sinbad. What wild tales Scheherazade described of Sinbad landing on a sleeping whale that woke and shipwrecked him, of an island of gigantic birds living in a valley, of elephant-eating snakes and diamonds as large as their fists, of a man-eating giant that he and his crewmates blinded with the creature's red, hot, iron spits. Sinbad escapes the giant snakes and cannibals and gets buried in a tomb alive with his dead wife. Yet he returns home each time, wealthier in both jewels and tales, and he is still not done. But Scheherazade tells the Sultan she will tell him more the next night. Of course, not all are as fortunate as Sinbad as her tale of the Candelar Prince, three princes, sons of kings, all blinded in their right eye by misfortune and entreated to tell their stories to the mysterious hostess Zobeda. The first prince lost his father and I to the Grand Vizier's treachery and fled to his uncle's kingdom, but was soon forced to escape again when the vizier came for war. The second prince found an underground palace where a princess was imprisoned by a genie. Brash and emboldened by his feelings of love for her, he summoned the genie only to find out himself powerless, ending up transformed into a monkey. He was lucky to be found by a sultan whose magician daughter summoned the genie to find him in a battle of transformations. Though she was able to defend him, She burned up in flames from her final magic, the fire blinding the prince in one eye. What happened next? And what of the third prince? The sultan asked. Well, Scheherazade said, I'll tell you tomorrow night. But not all Scheherazade's tales are so full of ill fortune. The perfect prince, Kamar al-Zaman, his charm was only rivaled by a beautiful princess named Bandura. When the two genies argued over which of the two was more splendid, they brought the princess to Kamar al-Zaman to compare them. But the two fell deeply in love. Upon hearing this, when she returned, Princess Bandura's father thought her crazy and promised her hand in marriage to whoever could cure her illness. Her cousin was the only one who believed her and traveled to find the prince and brought him back in disguise to give the princess a ring. Tell me the ending, 
the Sultan commanded. Did they have their happy ending? Shahrazad only smiled and promised the Sultan the ending tomorrow night. The Sultan was enchanted by Shahrazad's tales and promised her to no longer kill his wives as long as she stayed by his side, an offer she wryly accepted. Their marriage was greatly celebrated, much like the royal festivities of Baghdad. Such were held in Sinbad's honor, she claimed, for all of his adventures. Her stories held the attention of the entire city. Oh, Shahrazad finished her stories now. She told of Sinbad's escape from the enraged rock and his triumph over the old man of the sea, of his wondrous voyage to a city made of diamonds and pearls and gems, of his last adventure of escape from the birdmen. The third Kalandar prince sailed in the most treacherous seas and smashed his boat against the rocks. He defeated the curse, but was then cursed instead with curiosity as he wandered into a palace where 40 princesses lived. There, he opened a forbidden door, and as punishment, a winged horse kicked out his eye. Like his brothers, he was lost and humbled. Through their misfortune and bad choices, all three princes were forced to shave their heads and don the robes of the calendar and were forgotten by the tyrannical leaders of the land. Here, Scheherazade cast a warning look at the Sultan, who understood her meaning. He had the decency to look ashamed. He knew that she would not tolerate any more injustice from him. And the young princess was ecstatic upon finding the young prince's ring, immediately asking to marry him, a proposal most celebrated by all. If you were triumphant adventurer, a powerful magician, or a clever storyteller, then you would receive such celebration as well. Scheherazade knew this all too well. Her story spread from mouth to mouth, far and wide across land and sea and time. Just as the sea favored Sinbad seven times, she was revered by all for centuries to come. Scheherazade's stories, along with her own, are remembered even today. <laughs> Did you like her stories, my friends? Then perhaps it is time to make your own. We're going to have it sung by our very own Jake Zimmer. Uh, this is from the 1937 film about a danceable in, in distress, starring Fred Astaire, George Burns, and Gracie Allen, and based on the P.G. Woodworth's novel of 1919. The song is inspired by the thick, dreary fog of London. Oh, 
Just Friends, and a little more about this. This is a jazz standard written in 1931. These old pieces here about a couple that is broken up and is just becoming just friends. Okay, so I'm trying to make it work just by being friends. It's been recorded by the likes of Tony Bennett, Dizzy Gillespie, Herbie Hancock, Stan Getz, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, Sarah Vaughn, and Joe Williams. So our CB jazz combo will feature Elliot on tenor. We've got Alex on trumpet, Sam on keyboard, Josh on guitar, and Garrett on the drum set, and Unju on the bass. Here you go. Thank 
Enjoying the story so far? I really hope you are. This is our first half. We're on schedule. I'd like to really just thank a few things real quick before we break for intermission. I want to thank the beautiful programs that you have. Uh, that was just, I mean, Roy, Roy Yoon designed all those. We got them printed and they're amazing, so hold on to them. They're collectors, I, brought, I believe. I want to thank uh, people at the, the lobby staff that helped collect tickets, uh, the bake sale, all the lobby things, uh, decoration of the slideshow, Jen Zimmer put together the slideshow for us and did the decorations up front, so thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and just, just general, this, I can't do this alone. we got so many people that help do so many things from transportation to festivals and equipment uh, to photographers to, to, to dads come and they take still pictures and video pictures of all their stuff. It's just, it's just amazing. So we're very happy. Uh, Jacob Lee and Paul Wu have been very good at taking pictures for us, so thank you so much. Uh, and there's a page of the program that lists everybody by name that helps me volunteer. I'm not going to read them all right now because we have a long night ahead, so I want to make sure we get out on time. So we have, it's a, good job, it's not, it's 7.59, we're a minute ahead, which is awesome. We're going to do a 10-minute break. We have a wonderful bake sale out there. Uh, if you like what you hear and you have the voice to donate or do whatever you need to do, do that up there. But we're going to start in 10 minutes with Symphony Orchestra. 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. As we start our second half, we're going to sit for orchestras. has a special treat for you. This man needs no introduction. Mr. Rod Yonkers, come on now.
tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird happily. came waddling round. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. Thank you. 
the cat walked around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Just then, Grandfather came out. He was upset because Peter had gone in the meadow. It's a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? to his grandfather's words. Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. And now, this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch, 
The bird on another, not too close to the cat. And the wolf walked round and round the tree Looking at, looking at them with greedy eyes. In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate watching all that was going on. He ran home, got a strong rope, and climbed up on the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched over the, the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle over the wolf's head. Only take care that he doesn't catch you. bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings, while the wolf snapped angrily at him from this side and that. to catch him, but the bird was clever, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, and carefully letting it down, the wolf by the tail and pulled with all of his might. Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Jump 
they only made the rope around his kettle tighter. triumphant procession. Peter at the head. Thank you. 
and flew birdie, chirping merrily. My, what brave fellows we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. And if one would listen very carefully, he could hear the duck quacking inside the wolf, because the wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed her alive. Symphony of Mr. Yonkers, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. Yonkers. Oh boy, wish I could talk more about that, but we gotta move on. That was a fun piece to play. Okay, now we got Jazz Band, our last set. Jazz Band's been amazing, they've been just absolutely outstanding this year. We're very proud to play our last set. Yay! All the groups I said it before, I mean, you know, superiors, great energy, great musicianship, wonderful things. So, with Jazz Hand, uh, they've just they've just surpassed all we've got. Yeah, they've just done a lot. We're going to miss them next year. So, uh, we're going to play two more songs. First of all, Alice in Wonderland. You know the story, hopefully. But the story of a young girl who disappears down a rabbit hole to a fantastic place full of bizarre and exciting adventures. Written for the 1951 Disney movie, has become a jazz standard performed by the likes of Dave Brubeck and others. So here we go. In three, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs>
All right. Solo stereo and Elliot on the saxophone and Noah on the trumpet. Excellent job. And then for our last piece for Jasmine, it's a favorite. It actually came, it was a Netflix series, I don't know, live action and off of the uh, animation from a long time ago. It's Tank from the, from the animated series Cowboy Bebop. This was composed as the opening theme of Cowboy Bebop. It is actually not a Bebop jazz piece, but rather a big band jazz piece meant to evoke the sound of old 60s spy themes, the shows, episodes, and high energy music follow the adventures of a group of bounty hunters traveling on their spaceship, the Bebop, in the year 2071. Here we go. Transportation and, and uh, just cute little hats and things that we do, there are touches that I just can't provide, so thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Duran, our, our jazz band and coach and instructor, who does a lot of wonderful things for us, thank you. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Austin Drake, a former, a former student of ours who comes back and helps the trumpets and, and trombones, so that's great. Uh, so we're still setting chairs up for concert band, so I can use this to give some thanks and save some time at the end. So. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for being here. Are you enjoying story time still? 
Yeah, this is fun. This is something that I wanted to do before the pandemic happened. I had all this stuff pink pot in my head, and then poof, things happened. So, uh, so this has been a couple years in the making. It's been really fun to, to think of songs that, that that tell stories and evoke stories, and just remember, I don't know, just this, so we love stories. I mean, I mean, from blockbusters to musicals to to to, to plays to, to just. I mean, I took a class at UCLA on like a, I think a Irish folklore that was talked about passing stories down from generation to generation. It was just amazing, just how imaginative we all are. And I'd like to thank CUIM for a huge imagination for pulling us through with the pandemic and helping everything that we need. And, and, and even though we may not afford everything, we find ways to afford stuff and do the things to make opportunities for kids so they can play music in the best possible way. Anyway. So thank you, CUIM. Uh, thank you, operating President Monica Brecow. You've been wonderful these last couple of years. And I know you'll still be wonderful as PTA president. So we just jump from president to president. Uh, incoming president is Melissa Stephan, so thank you. We're going to enjoy you for the next couple of years. Thank you. Uh, fundraisers for outgoing. We have Young Me and Mary Strobin will no longer be our outgoing, but thank you so much. Uh, incoming, Vanessa Bailey and Lena Rector, so thank you for coming on board. Uh, second VP of programs, outgoing Jen Zimmerman. Thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, Mary Strogan, thanks for incoming. You're going to do that again. And special events, outgoing Tracy Brown and Dee Lafitte, thank you for the, uh, oh my gosh, for the awards banquet and just all our, uh, the, the jazz night, all that kind of fun stuff that we did. Uh, incoming, Anna Lee and Rolla, thank you so much for taking on that role. Uh, Secretary, Layla Bell, thank you. And she helped me uh, come up with uh, little things that we're talking about for all the pieces too. So, so thank you, Layla, for taking that on at the last moment. That was very fun. Uh, hopefully, we'll stop for you. That was neat for me. Thank you. Uh, and our treasurer, Rinala, thank you so much for. Uh, finding ways to give us the money that we need to do the stuff we need to do. So it looks like we're almost there, so we're going to give you a special treat. We're going to play Casey at the Bat for you, with special narration guest, Cleveland Waters. <laughs> of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get but a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the back. Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a hoodoo, while the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and really the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, men saw what had occurred. Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats and more, the rose of Lusty Owl, it rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell, it pounded on the mountain, and recoiled upon the flap. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the map.
There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt. Was Casey at the bat? Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded him when he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, the flying splash in Casey's eye, the sneer girl of Casey's lip. And now the leather colored spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a watching in a haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball on heat and span. That ain't my style, said Casey. Crack one, the umpire said. From the benches, back with people, there went up a mobile roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, shouted someone on the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hands. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He still the rising tumult, he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the dumb sphere threw. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Crack two! Fraud! cried the man thousands, and echoed answered, Fraud! But one scornful leg from Casey, and the audience was on. They saw his face grow stern and bold. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the ear is shattered by the horse. Oh, somewhere in this famous land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. There is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Hooping for the whole team. If they know me, it's a shame. For it's what? Three strikes around at the old. Vegas to fly Godzilla. He destroys the strip, but is defeated by an army of elephants. Eric Whitaker, the, the, the composer, who's also a choral composer, very, very big in the choral world, was commissioned by University of Nevada of Las Vegas to write this piece, and he finished it during his first year at Juilliard. He's a college kid, so sit back. Now, we're going to have a look. Okay, so just to warn you, this is a story. 
It is make-believe. You may hear some things that might terrify you, but no worries. We are okay. All right? Here we go.
Hey, come to the front. Please see our saviors, El Elvis. No, come down front. Come down front. Let's go. I know you can't always see in the back, but let's 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 give a big round of applause to our saviors here. The uh, marching Elvis. Yeah. All right, Elvis. They got the sideburns. They got the glasses. Look front. I want to thank our CBN parents for making them look like that, so that's awesome. Thank you for the All right. Okay, so we're going to do something we haven't done in so long. I'm so excited about this. Uh, at the end of our... Hold on. Yeah. All right, so... Ooh, it's already... Great, okay. So... Uh, this is where we look at every, what is all the broad people who aren't in band should be there. Okay, so we're going to attempt something I haven't done in like two, three years, two years, I don't know. But what you see here is every single musician in the instrumental music program. And we're going to play for you a very epic piece if I can get this started. We're going to play Lord of the Rings. How many of you have seen the movie Lord of the Rings? Uh, I did a very bad thing. I, 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 I went to the movie first. Who read the book, Lord of the Rings? Okay, that should have been first. I apologize to all my Tolkien fans here. Uh, so since we're story time, I figured what best to end this with a story of Lord of the Rings, J.R. Tolkien. Okay, Lord of the Rings is a saga of reluctant heroes who set forth to save the world from constant consummate evil. Its many worlds and creatures were drawn from Tolkien's extensive knowledge of, of, of philosophy and folklore. It weaves hundreds of characters, landscapes, and languages, but what many call a masterpiece wouldn't be without his Canadian music composer, Howard Shore. Okay, this is the movie score. Uh, there's another score that's an orchestral score that no one's really heard of, except if you're a diehard uh, musician, instrumental fan, it's also amazing, but we figured we'd play the, this one because more people know this one. So it looks like we're all there. Uh, we've gone through this twice together as a big group. So uh, it should sound very epic and wonderful. And uh, I think we should get started. Are we first? Percussion, are we set now? Almost. I love the word almost. OK, good. So I'm going to get a little higher. All right, the circus is in
Thank you. All right, everybody win. Stand up, please. Soon, stand up, stand up. This is the entire, this is Wind Ensemble, Symphony, Jazz Band, Concert Band, and Student Orchestra. All right, have a seat. So, we can't do this alone. I want to thank you, parents, for supporting us, parents for lessons, parents for drives, parents for everything. Uh, there's a whole bunch of, it's just amazing, we can't do this alone. Uh, Mr. Youngers, are you here? Mr. Youngers? Come over here, please. As you know, Mr. Youngers is retiring this year. Uh, people on stage, raise your hand if you had Mr. Youngers as a teacher. You have been so instrumental, so so inspirational to so many people in this community. I don't have the right eloquent words for it, but even when I started teaching in 93, uh, you were so helpful coming down to Wilson and showing me the ropes and doing all these things, and it's just been a blast working with you and going to your school and hearing your students play, and my both of my kids went through your program as well, and just very honored, and a little birdie told me that you had a favorite song. So we're going to play something for you, and we'll see if the birdie was prepped. Here you go. Two. One. Our parents got together, and we, we were trying to figure out what we could do for Ms. Youngers, and uh, Ms. Zimmer, can you, can you explain what's going to happen? Thank you. Well, on behalf of everyone that you see here and all of the lives that you have touched for 39 years, 37 years? Yeah, 37 in the district. Um, this is a very small token of our appreciation and Kanan, Kanan, well, can you raise? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing that we have for you is this coming up. Kanan, do you have the candle?
You, you heard them tonight. How can, you, how can you not think that I have the greatest job? I have the greatest job for another seven days at least. The greatest job, and I have been blessed immensely by this concert, but by, by your child musicians and by this community. Thank you so much for everything you've given me because it's been a complete joy. I love my job. Thank you. And so what we did is we put on like a, uh, we had some students get together and Sun Jays are president of, of marching band. And we had this idea. We had a bunch of people put their thumbprints on this tree. Can, can you show? And one of our students too, oh, she created a tree for you, a musical tree. And these are thumbprints of our people with all the names on the back of people that did that. We want to give this to you as a token of appreciation. And this book that you have, uh, this book that we gave you, we had an open forum. We had people just write thoughts and stories and things. So this is a collection of people's words. We can try to get alumni to involved in that. And then here's a little gift for you as well. And there you can open that up. Okay? Can we give Mr. Yonkers a big round of applause, please? You know, I did get paid for doing my job. You know? So we just, you've made such an impact in this community. We're going to miss you. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for staying here. It's been a wonderful year. I know we've had a lot of trials and tribulations, but we got through it. Uh, we got to play for you. I'm so happy we got to see everybody here. Uh, thank you, our foundation. Thank you, parents. Uh, just uh, so many wonderful things to say and do. If you get emails from us about dying outs here and there, please consider going to all those. And thank you, everybody else. Thank you, my wonderful family that allows me to do all these things, which is, oh my goodness, thank you. You're so considerate, understanding, my wife. and. And, and kids are already here now, and my mom is, is here, which is awesome. And my in-laws are here. I think my sister-in-law is here, too. I was here. Yeah, she right there, too. So anyway, thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Drive safely. Oh, and Dina. Dina Dominguez, come out here, please. I want to thank so many things go on in front of the stage that it's so easy to forget what goes on behind the stage. And Ms. Dominguez has been our, our ETL. Uh, coordinator, teacher, uh, person for four years now, five years now. And she has truly transformed this. She was able to get these wonderful lights, everything that you see here. She's still, we got speakers that need to be installed, but they're here. And, and all of her stage arts, all the kids, you want to bring them out a little bit? We had a huge setup for this. I mean, they had to, and again, I'm I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm organized, but I, I am not as organized as I think I am sometimes. I forget a few things, so it's always like, oh, can we add this? Oh, can we add this? Can we add this? So, so I think she knows by now that if I give her a plot, there's going to be some change, 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 changes. And I'm sorry about that. But her kids are so uh, accommodating and flexible and everything else. So can we give their kids a big round of applause? Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Now have a good evening. I will see you guys next year. Have a great summer.